All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since we have done one of these videos. I am super excited. I got my hands on the new Razer HD 4000 monocular rangefinder. I've also got the Fury 5000. Now, this is a new unit. I have, however, played with some other demo units. Today, we're going to be unboxing both. I want to start off with this guy. The Razer HD 4000. Now, I quite like the monocular setup for if you just need a rangefinder, you need something a little bit smaller. And I think this is awesome. Another place where this is really good versus a conventional sort of binocular style rangefinder is, let's say for example, I'm at a shooting match, I need a laser rangefinder to verify distances. Most of the shooting matches I go to, they give us the distances, but I still verify each and every one of them. So I could mount this next to my spotting scope, have super high power on this side, and then just verify distances with this. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. We are greeted with the normal Vortex packaging. However, I say normal, they've got a really high standard for packaging stuff, but they have stepped it up with this. Okay, a little VIP warranty, our unconditional promise to you. We all know the great Vortex VIP warranty. Okay, let's put this little pouch over there. We have some sort of lanyard thingy, the all important instruction manuals. And then what have we got in here? An Allen key or hex wrench as you Americans call it. And then a lens cloth. Okay, cool. So we're going to discard that, put that there, read this later and pop this back with the hex wrench and the little lanyard and pop that off to the side. Now, in this pouch is the actual Razer HD 4000 and I quite like this mechanism they've put on here. That's really nice. And we've got the super tactical webbing on the back here that you could attach it to a backpack strap or something like that. Open her up and the pouch really nicely soft coated inside. Um, almost feels a little bit spongy. Let's pop this guy off to the side. And in here we are greeted with the unit. By the way, if this is not super perfectly packaged, I have opened this up because I simply couldn't resist getting my hands on this guy. Now, overall, really, really like it. Um, just initial impressions, by the way. I have used it a little bit, as I mentioned, but how it feels, you know when you can sort of tell by the weight something is quality, it doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel light, it feels super sturdy. I like that this sort of belt clip is reversible, so if you're a lefty, you can swap it over to this side, which I think is a really neat little feature. Um, battery goes in here, and we have razor quality glass. We can control the eyepiece just to get your eye relief a lot better, and then obviously you've got your focus wheel at the back here. One of the features I'm most excited about for this is the scan feature. Now, Vortex has a super cool video to explain the scan feature. I'm probably gonna butcher it, but I'm gonna give it a go nonetheless. So the scan feature works like this. Let's say, for example, uh, let's use the things we got here. Let's say we have some trees at the back here. Uh, these are our trees, and this is the deer or the target we're ranging. Now, if I'm a thousand yards away, and I'm ranging this, if the deer is slightly in front of the trees, there's a chance ranging the trees at the back and now I take a shot at this target or the deer or whatever the case may be but I'm working with a 50 yard error or whatever the case may be. Now the scan feature on this allows you to either to single out do I want to range the target that's closest to me or do I want to do this in reverse let's say the trees were like this and our deer is over here. Now potentially you could be ranging the trees or branches, but you think you're ranging the deer, whereas if it's on the furthest setting, you will get this distance only. Now, I think that is super neat. Neat. Who says neat? I do, apparently. I think that's super cool. So, more field testing on this guy. Let's pop it over here and let's jump over to the Fury 5000. Uh, that is why we have a knife. What I do like, uh, let me just put that over there. Okay, so immediately we are greeted with this super nice glass pack harness. Wow, that is really, really nice. 
Now if you had the old theory you would have had to purchase this separately. We have our straps, battery, more strap, more strap, lens caps, strap, more strap, lens cap, strap, and you guessed it, more straps. Okay, and our instruction manual, but you know how we feel about those. What's cool about this harness, it goes on here and you can crisscross it across your back and you've got your binos right where you need them. Now similar to this little clasp thing they've got on here, um, they have done the same thing on the harness on the front. Now the reason that is nice is if you're out hunting, you don't want to velcro open your binocular harness so this is very quiet and you can access your binos just like that. I actually have a similar pouch to this. It's made by Badlands and it uses a magnet to close but it does, if you let it go too early it goes and it like snaps on. Very nicely padded uh, little pouch. This is really well made. Okay, well made pouch. Um, and then here we have the actual liner. So these babies look pretty cool. They are a little bit bigger than conventional binos. They're 10 by 42 configuration. Now, this is a great buy if you're looking at getting both a laser rangefinder and a set of binoculars. It's one thing you can carry instead of having two pieces of kit. Now for me, when we go target shooting, I did use these extensively, but lately I've been using my spotting scope more, therefore I'm probably gonna head over to this. Now, coming up this weekend, I actually go to an ELR match. I'm gonna be shooting a 338 Lapua mag, and I'm gonna take both of these with, and I'm gonna do some testing with them, more comprehensive testing with them to see how well they do at picking up steel out to distance. Now our furthest target's gonna be at 1.8 kilometers, 1,800 meters, it's probably about 2,000 yards, I haven't done the math. And I don't think either of these two units are gonna have any problems picking up those targets. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are using a laser rangefinder, to get the most out of something like this, you really need to stabilize it. You can do pretty well by just holding it on, but those micro little wobbles, that's gonna put you all over the place. Whereas if you have this on a tripod, or you're going over your truck's window or something, or mirror, it's going to be way more stable and you're going to be able to get better reads and it's going to give you more distance in that. So anyway guys, as you know, I'm sponsored by Vortex, so full disclosure, but most of you that watch this channel already know that. I have a lot of experience with the first generation Fury. I don't have a lot of experience with the current one. I have used it a bit, as I've mentioned. So the first Fury versus the EL range, why did I get the EL range? I felt that at that point in time, the laser was far superior. What I can tell you now is having used the demo unit quite a bit, this laser is far superior to my EL range. Keep in mind also the EL range is double the price point, but you do get a little bit better glass. Now I've looked through both of these side by side, done some comparisons, asked a few friends, we do feel like the glass department is gonna to go to the Swarovski, but that's kind of what they're known for. But again, the laser in this is amazing, and by no means is the glass bad in this. As always, we've got the Vortex coatings on this, and they're pretty scratch resistant, but I do like these rubber flip caps they give us for the front of this. I'm very excited to play with this more. As I mentioned, I've played with a little bit around the house, but I have not shot this out to distance. And when I say shoot, I mean shoot the laser. So this weekend, I'm really excited to use this at the ELR match, and I don't think we're gonna have any problems ranging any of the targets with that. So, what you can look forward to is a more sort of hands-on video after I've used this for maybe give me a month, um, that I can just give you guys sort of my opinion on this. Both of these units are in the market now. We waited quite a while for this guy to come. This guy has been here for a little bit. Very excited about this. Really, really can't explain to you how excited I am about this. When I saw the announcement, I was like, yes! Because I currently have the Ranger 1800, and I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be my go-to. It's always in my shooting bag, this one. I, I feel very strongly about that. Anyway, they are available now from your closest Vortex retailer. Thank you very much for watching this video. Comment down below if you own either one of these and what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. By the way, please subscribe down below if you have not done so already and this is your first time watching my channel. If you're shooting the ELR match this weekend, I will see you there. By the way, let me show you this. I'm stabilizing it with the 22B around. This is my new Defiance long action with a Magnum bolt face. 
Yes. So, I asked on my Instagram. Please go follow me on Instagram, by the way. What do you guys think I'm going to be building on this? And the answer to that is, I'm going to build a 7 Psalm. Yes. Short action ultra magnum on a long action. Why on earth would you do that? Are you dumb, guy? No. I'm going to do that because I want to shoot the 195 grain Burger Extreme Outer Limit Hunter. And with the reamer that we've designed, we were able to determine that on the short action, we really would have a problem extracting a live round to get it back out uh, the ejection port. So that's why I went for the long action and I also got a great deal on it. I have just borrowed this really quickly for the sake of the video and then it will go back until we get the build approved. I'm really excited about that project. I will probably do sort of a medium palmer barrel on that. And the reason I will do that is because as you guys know, I hunted with my 6.5 Creed and this will be my main new go-to hunting caliber. But yes, you have that 7300. It's still at customs. And that gun has a stupidly heavy barrel. It's gonna go in heavy stock. So this is gonna be sort of hunting orientated and I can also put it over into a tactical style chassis like the MDT to go shoot uh, other match if I wanted to do so. I'm really excited about the 7 Psalm. I shot a friend's one quite recently at that long range match we did that went quite well and uh, I really enjoyed it. So 7 Psalm it will be 195 burgers maybe I'll try the 180 ELDMs but I think we might have some jacket coming off because the ELDM has a pretty thin jacket from the research that I've done. Anyway guys, uh, that's a little bit of bonus content I guess. I should wrap up this video, go edit it, and I will see you next week, Wednesday. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one, bye. And we've got the mole, mole? Mole, 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 mole. <laughs> and for incredible glass, but I mean, Really, what do you what do you want to shoot at 5,000 yards? What do you want to shoot at 5,000 yards? If you can shoot at 5,000 yards, comment down below. This is how ghetto the setup is, by the way. If you're still watching, um, oh crap! Don't, do not drop. So I basically take this and then hook it on one of the beams in my roof to film the top-down shot. That is how that shot gets done. Um, stay. Okay, now we have to copy a crap load of footage and then start editing it. If you like these sort of bonus videos, maybe you should consider joining my Patreon down below and um, this is why I should go copy this and not talk any further. Anyway, bye.